I'm a weird consumer in terms of, I just don't usually just buy a product to buy just the physical product or whatever intangible thing of it's software or whatever. I like to know who I'm buying from. I like to know the mission. I like to know who the people running the business are and just the holistic picture of how they go to market, how it was developed, the underlying why, and also, you know, what are they doing to market the product? And that's what the episode is today because I came across a really cool tweet by a individual named Joe Pompliano. I remember following him years ago just because he was kind of at the forefront of a lot of crypto news. And now that it's been kind of silenced, a lot of the things that he's tweeting out is kind of just more like business processes and what businesses are doing. And he recently posted, because I found this super fascinating, about Amazon's Black Friday game. And I thought it was interesting because from my understanding, I I never looked into the act specifically as to why there's no NFL games on certain days of the week. There's Thursday night football, Monday night football, and of course on Sundays. But in the months from September to December, they're not allowed typically to have games on Saturday and Friday. But there are exceptions to the rule. So before we get into the tweet, we can look at exactly what that act is. So this is the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961. And on page two, we'll see that the limitations are that a joint agreement C permits the telecasting of all or a substantial part of any professional football game on any Friday after six o'clock post meridian PM or on any Saturday during the period beginning on the second Friday in September and ending in the second Saturday in December in any year from any telecasting station located within 75 miles of the game of any intercollegiate college level or any any interscholastic football contest, which would be high schools and college prep, all that. So now that we are here in the United States, it it's highly unlikely that there isn't a broadcasting station within 70 miles of any high school. I mean, I think even around me, there's probably five or six high schools within a five mile radius. So pretty much there's just a prohibition on any sort of NFL game on Fridays after 6 p.m. To circumvent that, there is this new Thursday night football or Black Friday football game. Since the Thanksgiving games are being held on Thursday, Amazon has the rights to Thursday games. Well, that is outside of their agreement. So they chose to spend $100 million for the rights to broadcast an NFL game on Black Friday. And a hundred million dollars for one single game sounds absolutely ridiculous on its face. However, we go to the tweet by Joe Pompliano, and it states Amazon is paying a hundred million dollars to broadcast the NFL's first ever Black Friday game. Now, why would they do that? According to him, it is a chess move to steal market share from brick and mortar stores. That is the gist of it. It is to get people from being out and shopping on one of the biggest shopping, if not the biggest shopping holiday of the year and to stay at home and deliver curated ads to their prime subscribers or non prime viewers, because I don't believe, yeah, Amazon is allowing anyone to watch. So you don't have to actually be a prime subscriber and I don't know who isn't anymore. It's just so worth it to get two day shipping and all the other benefits that you can with their membership, not sponsored or anything else. I am affiliated. If you want to support the channel through Amazon links, but there's no back and forth. I don't get to talk to Jeff Bezos or anything else, but that's besides the point. Anyway, cost of a 30 second commercial, normal Thursday night football games, 440,000 black Friday games, 880,000. And they have the metrics to back it up because normally NFL Thanksgiving Day, there's 33.5 million individuals, which is exponentially more than the average number of viewers for any other sporting event. And since there are going to be the only professional football game on Black Friday, you can expect those numbers to be ever increased. And then when they're talking about their audience based creative, I 
specifically don't know why Joe put that as a quotation because I really couldn't find anything on Amazon's site, but we'll get into um, what they have on their platform as far as ads. But this is really cool. So there's going to be targeted ads. You can shop during the events. You can click on things. It's going to be interactive. And there is, for example, they talk about, according to AdAge, Bose will show three different ads using Amazon's ad technology. The first ad features Joe Burrow and will be delivered to non-prime members. Cool. Cool because anyone can watch. While the other two Bose ads will feature different products and be shown to only Prime members based on their Amazon Prime search history. And this is only specific to Bose. So any other product out there that's going to be paying the $880,000 to air 30 second commercial is going to have different curated ads as well. And that's the fascinating part about the streaming service and being able to leverage their big data analytics. I mean, AWS, you see it constantly in terms of what they're doing in the market of cloud and sports and just whatever. And then they get to do that, invest in it and actually get money back in their pocket. I'd love to know what their return on investment is for a hundred million dollar right to broadcast NFL. And it's such a win-win for the NFL, right? Because they're getting hundred million dollars to broadcast a game. And nowadays I think most people are watching like red zone anyway, because commercials are just something you don't want to see anymore. So they're not really losing out. They're just adding an additional day of viewers and they're just getting more market. So if we jump over, just want to show you because it's, it's really cool. Like, you know, why you would advertise on a broadcasting network versus why you would advertise on any other platform. Well, I'm a big data, data, data guy. One of the reasons I've recently enrolled in artificial intelligence and machine learning is to advance my knowledge and the ability to use more data and to create my own algorithms and models for my everyday work. But here's the data that Amazon has as far as their ad campaign, younger audience, more engaged, affluent, talking about salaries of the average person, um, NFL linear 98. Is that something household income? It's HHI. Uh, aggregate household income. I, you know, I don't, I don't know the specific numbers on that. Um, leaned in, but it's just data, data, data. And I think numbers talk louder than words or, I I just hate when people are giving me anecdotal information unless you have actual data to back it up and it's as objective as possible and you, I understand your metrics, yada, 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 so on and so forth. I just think it it was really fantastic to break down why someone would spend a hundred million dollars, give it to the NFL for the rights to broadcast. Cause you would think having a product, you would just, you know, yearn for someone to like come to you just to want to show your product on the field, but the NFL, the big shield, having make so much money that it's such a win-win for both parties. I found that super fantastic. On another kind of big ad energy move, I mean, I think a lot of us saw this. Let me see if I pull up the right original post. Yeah. So if you're listening, I pull up, it's Snoop Dogg. It's a picture of him, prayer hands, looking very serious. And he states, after much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. And the comments are uh, pretty hilarious. I mean, this guy, one of the top comments I have curated on my line is that the dude that rolled his blunts, it's unemployed for life. My man Snoop Dogg giving up smoke is like Vin Diesel giving up your family. Uh, if Snoop Dogg not smoking no more, there's some serious ones. Um, this this gentleman says the irony situation after 40 years or so of saying weed is great and influencing millions of people, he ends up admitting it wasn't the best thing to do. I originally saw it and I was like, okay, there's got to be more to it. Um, even this gentleman um that's first up here says i refuse to believe this definitely part of some sort of marketing campaign that he's part of some new smoking device that will the slogan give up smoke it's not disingenuous it's not dishonest it's hilarious and it teetered on the ambiguity point to garner so much engagement 
I mean, this thing has 4.76 million likes, tens of thousands of individuals commenting their opinion on it, making jokes or being serious. And you would pay so much money as a company for that any sort of engagement. And this doesn't even take into consideration the amount of news outlets that ran with this of all facets of different markets to just continually show that. So, I mean, we're looking at numbers here only in terms of what is on Instagram, because if I go back and I analyze, I was looking for some information with regards to like what this would typically cost. Um, and I found how much do Instagram ads cost on average, Instagram advertising costs anywhere from zero to 25 cents per click, uh, $4 per hundred or $4 up to $4 per thousand impressions and three to eight cents per engagement. So when I'm looking at those likes, which is individuals interacting with the post, which would could, would be considered an engagement impression would just be it coming up on the timeline and someone looking at it. So we don't even know what that factors into. In terms of how many impressions I actually had a on my old Instagram account, I had a stupid reel headed on TikTok when I saw TikTok at the time. And it had, I believe, 21,000. It was like 21,000 likes, like 10,000. No, no. I think it was. Yeah, it was 100,000 likes and it was like uh, 10 or 20,000 comments but I had like 12 million impressions. So that's not, that's a fractional amount of what you're getting as far as 4.76 million likes. And I just did some rough math in terms of engagement, which would be the comments, which would be the likes. And you're getting a hundred and that would cost, if you, even I was on the low end of three cents per engagement, about 150 K. Again, that's not even all the news outlets that ran with it, trying to understand the ambiguity of it, the mystery behind it and all that. And ultimately what came out was <laughs> it was a ad for the solo stove. It's kind of your <laughs> I mean... I can't picture Snoop Dogg chilling in his backyard with a smokeless fire pit. Like I have a solar stove. I absolutely love it. I have a friend here in Austin, Texas where Chubby's moved who actually owns solo stove or if it's vice versa, I can't remember if solo owns Chubby or Chubby owns solo. Anyway, got a great discount, got one for me and I love it. <laughs> and when I'm I, like, I wouldn't picture Snoop Dogg being the type of individual that would, but I mean, money talks and I think it's hilarious now, this one got 2.8 million likes, not as much as the original ambiguous sort of posting, but it caused so such a stir. Uh, I'd be curious what his normal interactions are like. He's got 83 million followers. Uh, let's see. If loading. Um, so let me. Here's the genius marketing stunt they want to talk about. Uh Let's see what, so wealth, he, he's got a shared post on Instagram. It says, well, Snoop Dogg masterfully executed a marketing stunt by announcing he would give up smoke, which was linked to a new advertisement for Solo Stove, a brand known for smokeless fire pits. This move was part of a broader campaign where he collaborated with Solo Stove and they even introduced a product named the Snoop Stove, known for his extensive work as a brand ambassador. I think he called himself a spokesman. And uh, cryptic social media posts about quitting smoke were initially assumed to be hinting at a marketing stunt and suspicion that later proved to be accurate. The campaign has been recognized as one of the biggest PR stunts of the holiday season, showcasing Snoop Dogg's marketing acumen and his team's ability to generate buzz and intrigue. A hundred percent. That was the case. I mean, bravo as far as who decided, you know, I don't know if it was Snoop's team who loved the product and went to them, or it was some genius marketing individual at solo stove, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about it here and I, I just, I love breaking down different ways to market a product, how they go to market. Uh, and it's just fantastic. Now, if I were to go to solo stove, you know, again, I love my normal solo stove pit. I don't know if I'm getting a Snoop Dogg branded one with <laughs> the bucket hat, the stickers and whatnot and everything else. But 
it definitely would get me to just go to the normal solo stove website and buy like I, the, to me, the pizza oven, the bundles, I have no affiliation with solo stove. But I, I, I love mine. Um, you, you wouldn't need Snoop Dogg to sell me on it, but for people that weren't aware of it, oh man, they got this free Mesa torch. What is this about? Look at that. See, it's got me back on the website. I'm looking. Oh, these are pretty cool. But are they mosquito repellents or are they just torches? It looks like they're just torches. Well, that's pretty cool. Anywho, I mean, look at that. Free advertisement for anyone's watching this and I have no affiliation. So, you know, clap, clap, bravo to Solo Stove. And those were two genius marketing things, different business initiatives as far as the Amazon and then the Solo Stove. The last one I'll talk about is just OpenAI. I mean, they paid $0 in terms of the publicity that they got over Sam Altman and the OpenAI board's whole conundrum of ousting him. And now in the end, as far as updates go, pull up this. Uh, from OpenAI's Twitter account, we have reached an agreement in principle for Sam Altman to return to OpenAI as CEO with a new initial board of Brett Taylor, Larry Summers, and Adam D'Angelo. We are collaborating to figure out the details. Thank you so much for your patience through this. Personally, I would like to know more details. I released a podcast that was talking about potential fear, Sam Altman's initiatives, his motives. There's different ex-employees coming out about how he managed the company and whatnot, which could have ultimately led to his ousting. However, all this hubbub from, I think, November 18th to four days later, they're back at square one. Like a big whole circle, all the publicity, all the news covering it. I mean, OpenAI isn't the only one doing artificial general intelligence, but for some reason, just because of the chat GPT model, it's direct to consumer interactivity. It's just become the state of the art or just the household name. And you can't apparently have open AI without Sam Altman. So he's done a fantastic job as far as marketing himself as the face and the head kind of independent. Like if you think of Apple, yeah, Apple was Steve jobs. Steve jobs was Apple, but post Steve jobs. Now you have Tim cook. So Apple can still operate as its own separate entity, but people just had such an ownership, I guess of the identity of open AI related to Sam Altman and his vision that. You just couldn't have one without the other, which caused all the stir, all the different discussion, and whoever didn't know who OpenAI was before and what they were doing now knows it. So that was just zero dollars in terms of direct marketing costs, indirect as far as potential cleanup they have to do internally, sure, but it was just in the news. Like Even like when that Snoop Dogg ad campaign came out, I believe, let me look at the date of that. I give up smoke. Six days ago. Yeah, it was about the same timeline of the ousting. So it got drowned out with this whole controversial ad campaign. Controversial, um, ambiguous, intrigue ad campaign by the OpenAI debacle and everything that was going on. And again, they're back at square one. So it was kind of like three different ways to market their business, whether intentionally or unintentionally, but had amazing repercussions in terms of the ROI that they're going to get from it. So again, I love just talking about all facets of business, not just the actual product that we put in our hands and that we use. I like to understand how people are making business decisions and how that affects how I do business or how I do my job on the side. So I hope you find that interesting because I definitely do. And I'll share more different facets of my interests like this. Thank you for listening.